Hi guys, welcome back to Javianelli Travels. On today's video, we want to show you the demolition process of a 1995 Itasca Class C RV, which is built on a Ford E350 chassis. And no, this RV does not belong to us. As much as we loved it, um, it belongs to a client that reached out to us because she noticed many soft spots all around the floor. She contacted us through Facebook and after um, doing an inspection for her, she decided to have us do an entire renovation of the interior of the RV. We have left our contact information in the description in case you want to contact us for a renovation or um, any type of project that you have on your rig. The first thing that we did was to remove the stick of floor. And as you can see, we were able to lift it up very easily. We then tried it to see if we could remove the sofa, but we decided to just remove the entire floor before going into the bigger things. This type of stick of floor is very used here in the US because of the low cost. And also it is very easy to apply. However, we always recommend the use of vinyl planks as it is longer lasting and also very easy to install and considerably still within a budget. And as you can see, a lot of these pieces will break down into smaller pieces. However, with the help of the tow bar, Javi was able to lift the tiles um, in larger pieces, which made the process a lot easier and faster. And just like that, we finished taking off all of the stick of floor. The floor was very sticky at this point, and I have also jumped several times to get a feeling of the damage on the soft floor as it felt really, really soft in these areas. Once we were finished with that, we then went ahead and removed the sleeper sofa. As you can see, the sofa is built completely attached to the wall and the floor of the, of the RV, making it a very lasting build. However, by just removing a few screws, we were able to take the top part off. From then, we decided to remove the water tank and to do that, we had to remove everything that was in that area. And also, uh, we wanted to check this area because we still had to do the repair of the subfloor. After the cleanup of the area, we were also able to see the state of the floor and the subfloor under the water tank. We were concerned that maybe there was some water damage in this area because um, number one, it's one of the most common damage reasons for older RVs. And because of course, as you can see, there is a window there is an access to the outside and also a water tank all in the same space.
we also went ahead and lifted up the old carpet and by doing that we made sure to check the subfloor in this area again we were trying to see if there was any additional or any water damage at all thankfully for us and our client we did not see any water damage or anything alike coming in this area Once we managed to remove the straps that held the water tank in place, we were then all good to go in this area. And this is how it looks so far. From the outside, we went ahead and removed the electrical heater. Our client asked us to remove it since she expects to be spending all of her winters in Florida and did not want to keep it. Plus, she could use this space for additional storage inside of the RV. We also had to remove the fridge that was attached to the cabinet surrounding it. We later realized that it was built into the frame and it had attachments on the top and the bottom, making it very difficult to remove unless we demolish the entire cabinet around it. This fridge was still under working conditions, however, our customer wanted to replace it for a residential fridge. And here, Javi kept looking at it and uh, trying to figure out whether it was best to continue pulling pieces apart or just to set it in fire and let it consume. However, we desisted of the idea, and as you can see, we kept removing it slowly but surely, um, trying not to destroy much of it at the beginning because we didn't know if we could still be able to save the entire frame and pull out the fridge some way um, but unfortunately we had to remove the entire section because the fridge would not come off At the end of the demolition, we counted 11 trash bags. It was a lot of trash, but um, I mean, you guys, it could have been way more. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, uh, we tried to keep the area as clean as possible to make the workflow easier.
and in here we finally got to see the reason why the fridge would not come off no matter what. If you notice in this area, you will see that there is some black brackets attached to the fridge and that was built and put in place before the manufacturer built the uh, cabinet that was on top of it. On this side, they had like a small spice cabinet and um, yeah, that was put into place after the fridge was built in. So for us, it was impossible to reach it unless we demolished the entire cabinet. After doing that and after removing the screws that were in those black brackets, everything went very smoothly and we were able to take the fridge out. Once the fridge was out, we took another look into the walls back here to see if there was any water damage. As we said before, we kept looking for damaged areas or anything like that. That way, when the time to rebuild came, we knew that we were building on a firm and reliable foundation. We wouldn't want to leave any uh, water damage in the walls or anything like that untreated because it would of course damage whatever is built on top of it so if you decide to do a project like this yourself just keep looking for these things and this is our lovely client she came to see how the demolition was going on and uh, she was actually quite impressed that we had already removed all of the floor the fridge and also the sofa we also took a moment to explain everything that we had done so far and also to run some ideas with her. Javi went ahead and checked all of the electricity going into the fridge to make sure that all of the cables were in good condition. And also uh, we checked the plumbing for the gas lines that were there, which we had to remove later on because the new fridge was just a regular um, residential unit and it did not need any gas connection. And I just realized it was a good time for a disclaimer or throughout the first part of this renovation I had very severe allergies that's why you see me blowing my nose all throughout the video I apologize for that um, I did not mean to be you know suffering from allergies um, and recording myself um, 
So yes, I apologize for that. Um, once or twice a year, this happens to me. And it just so happened that we had to do this demolition and I had like the most severe allergies that I've had in years. Once everything was removed from that area, Javi also lifted up part of the subfloor to check if it had any insul insulation underneath and also to check if there was any repair that had to be done in that area. By doing this, we realized that the insulation, the ribs, and also the floor or the subfloor under the insulation was in really good condition, meaning that the damage was only on the top plywood the, that is the first layer that you guys see in this part of the video however Javi still decided to remove some of the insulation to triple check that everything down there was in good condition later on he also went under the RV to check how the floor looked from the outside And that was it for day one of the demolition. We cleaned everything up and we came back the following morning to finish the last thing that we had to take out, which was the kitchen. We began by making sure that the gas tank was closed and the gas lines were empty. Please, if you're working with gas, removing the stove top or anything like that, it is best that you make sure that the lines are empty and the tank is closed. We don't want you to have any type of accident or anything like that. Once we got uh, um, the stovetop out, we then went ahead and removed the water heater. This was an older, much bulkier model and our client decided that she wanted to have a smaller tankless water heater installed. Removing the water tank was quite easy. All we had to do was remove all of the screws from the outside and it just came off. It was uh, quite heavy, but not difficult to remove.
the face of the water heater was also cut off to be put back um, since it has an access to the outside of the RV and we still needed to cover that. However, we instead of doing uh, closing it up entirely, we decided to use the same system that it had already in place for the water heater so that it would also be an access to the new tankless water heater. And before putting it back into place, Javi applied a line of silicone all around it to make sure that no water would come in from the screws. Then he just screwed the old screws back into place and we were done with that part. Back inside of the RV, we went ahead and removed the countertop, making sure that we did not break it, as we will later be using it as a template for the new countertop. This um, idea of saving things for later is also good for drawers, um, doors, or, or anything like that uh, that you plan on just replacing, but you need a template for it. That way you don't have to like do a million measurements or try to figure things out in a different way. We um, put then uh, the countertop in a safe location. And uh, we also found that inside of the counter, there was some damage in the drawer area. So that's something else that we had to fix from the kitchen. Other than that, everything else looked fine. The wall was in perfect condition, no water damage in the area, and um, everything looked as it would for an RV of this age. Once we were finished taking out everything that we had to from the kitchen, we were then finally done with the demolition and ready to start the renovation. The renovation videos will be uploaded as well, so keep an eye for that. We are working on them and it will be uploaded as soon as possible. Um, as always, we want to thank you for staying here with us and watching our videos. And Keep in mind that we have a blog with more information, javianellitravels.com, and also you can find us on Instagram and Facebook, Javianelli Travels. Thank you and have a great day.